when I was a kid, I did grow up in a Catholic setting. Um, some of my earliest memories were my grandma. She would be teaching me like the prayers of the rosary before bed, um, like the angel of God prayer. I would say that before bed with my grandma. Um, so I remember being like three or four years old and um, going up to her saying, oh, like I prayed like this prayer, I prayed the rosary, and she'd be like, oh, good job, like <laughs> like a cute grandma does, yeah. Um, and then I remember going to Mass as a kid. Of course, I didn't receive uh, communion, so I remember going, like, putting my mm -hmm. arms across my chest like that, going up to the priest. Mm -hmm. um, so my mom's side of the family is um, pretty Catholic, um, and then she married into... Um, a family where, with my stepdad. Yeah. Um, they're also a pretty devout Catholic family as well. Yeah. So um, from about maybe eight or nine, um, like when I was younger, we didn't always consistently go to church because I don't remember going to church every Sunday. Uh -huh. um, but then around like eight or nine years old, we started going more consistently to the Catholic mass every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I was actually not baptized as a baby which is, um, I, I don't know, kind of a weird concept to me growing up in a Catholic family, but... So you said you, um, you, I was you weren't baptized, baptized Catholic, is that what you said? Uh, not when I was a baby, no. Okay. I got baptized in, like, the second grade. Gotcha, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I got baptized and First Communion at the same time um, during the Easter Vigil. Um, mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I guess that's kind of where I got started, and then sure. I was going to like Wednesday night kind of catechesis classes because um, mm -hmm. I went to a public school. So um, we had to get our Catholic knowledge separately and they had that on Wednesday nights. Um, so as mm -hmm. a kid, I never paid attention in mass. Like I used to think mass was like the most boring thing on earth. Like why do we always have to go there? <laughs> um, and then it kind of trickled into those classes on Wednesday nights too. Like I wasn't fully engaged. I wasn't really enjoying it. I just wanted to be at home, like playing or watching my shows or yeah. <laughs> whatever else I wanted to do as a kid. So that's kind of where I started slipping away from the faith. I think it was that engagement. Like I wasn't fully engaged. Of course, at mass they're using big words, and it's like kind of hard for a uh, like 10 or 11 year old boy to fully understand like the readings and the homilies and everything. Mm -hmm. So with that disengagement, I never, I guess, paid attention. So I never fully got like even the basic knowledge of the Catholic church, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And then kind of in puberty or a little before then I started realizing that I was attracted to other boys. Like I would think, oh, like, he's cute, or he's cute, and, and I don't know, like, I didn't, I guess I knew that wasn't normal, mm -hmm. because I wouldn't talk about it to the other kids. Um, I gravitated more towards um, hanging out with the girls in my classes, mm -hmm. so I would always have, like, a friend group of girls I would be hanging out with, and the other kids in the class, of course, noticed that, like, the one boy hanging out with all the girls, um, so then they start picking on you like oh you're gay you're this mm -hmm. and um and do you th like do you think you're a girl and all these things and and I don't know the, like those comments used to like hurt me because I used to think why do they care if I am hanging out with girls instead of like the boys like am I doing something wrong or mm -hmm. like that was before like even the f like full attractions came into play yeah so I used to kind of get upset that kids would like pick on me about that and it would kind of bring me down um, but then I realized like I was attracted to the boys and and like the girls in my friends group would be talking about oh that boy in this class is cute and I'd be thinking oh yeah he is but I didn't want to like chime in I guess because of all the comments that people make mm -hmm. um, so then growing up a little bit further um, like in getting into high school I got a, my first job at Burger King and I was like super <laughs> excited because it's kind of like a little taste of independence and um, you get to make your own money. And, and a lot of my friends from high school were also working at Burger King. So it was kind of like 
oh, killing two birds with one stone. Like I'm hanging out with my friends, but we're making money at the same time because mm-hmm. we're all working. Mm-hmm. And and then another thing, another reason I liked the job at Burger King was I was working on Sundays. So while my family was going to church and all of that, I didn't have to go now because, oh, I have an excuse. I can go work at my job instead. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, okay, well, I got that out of the way. Now I don't have to go to church because I'm working. So then that's kind of where I just stopped going to Mass at that point. And I never thought about church, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I had nev- also never heard anything about church teaching regarding same-sex attraction or homosexuality. At that point in my life, all I had heard is like maybe family members or kids at school or what's on TV, because at that time, the TV wasn't as liberal as it is now. Mm -hmm. Like, people, like, two men being in a relationship on a TV show was, like, kind of controversial, or it was, like, the, like, the butt of the joke of the show or Mm -hmm. something. And I used to think, well, how come, like, I'm always, like, the butt of the joke Mm -hmm. on TV shows, or when people are joking about things like, oh, that's gay, or this is gay, and it's kind of like, why like, do people have to like use mm. that? And then, of course, in the church, they're so like silent and everything about homosexuality. So I used to think, well, I think it's such a like a bad sin that they don't even want to talk about it in church. Mm. Like, I started feeling like uncomfortable when I would go catch a mass with my family because I'm thinking, oh, if they knew this about me, what would they say about me? What would they think? Like, they, I just felt like kind of this awkward stage where I was kind of hiding, like who I, who I felt like I was at that time. And so that kind of continued on. Um, I started dating in high school. I came out to friends, um, in, at school first, maybe in junior year of high school. Um, and then started looking for guys to date. I ended up coming out to my family as gay when I was a senior in high school. So like all my family, like my Catholic family, I told them, oh yeah, I'm gay. Like I only want to date guys. And, and of course they were really shaken up by that. Um, some of their reactions weren't what I hoped they were. Mm -hmm. Um, but of course it's kind of like a hard situation where, you don't really expect something like that to happen. And, and if you aren't familiar with the church teachings or, or have known other people in that situation as a parent or a family member of someone who comes out, you don't really know how to respond. So, um, I don't know. It was kind of a traumatizing part in my mm-hmm. life, but my family ended up kind of coming around over time. Um, they didn't, they weren't like, oh, like, I support you and, and go, like, do whatever you mm-hmm. want. Like, they, they, they always, always welcomed at their home and at different family functions. Mm-hmm. Um, I just kind of didn't talk about that part of my life with my family, mm-hmm. um, because I had respect for them as well. Like, I didn't want to make them uncomfortable. And honestly, I didn't want to feel uncomfortable making them feel uncomfortable. So I just kind of Mm -hmm. didn't really talk about that with them. Question for you, Um, Tyler, in regards to your family. Sure. Would you say in retrospect, do you feel like your your family, whether it's your parents or whoever it was you're kind of thinking about right now, would you say in retrospect that they were aware of the church's teachings and they were doing the best that they could to love you in that? Or would you say they they weren't fully aware? Like where, where were they maybe in that just... Just that if you could answer that, I'm curious. Um, I think they just knew that it's against church teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure to the full extent that they were aware of the mm-hmm. like actual church teaching regarding like celibacy mm-hmm. and all of that, because nobody ever talked to me about sure. that during that sure. time. Okay. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Um, so basically after high school then I graduated, went to college, kind of had my little freedom for the first time. Um, I ended up transferring to a college in Hawaii. And that was when I was like, finally, like I can just live as who I am and go and do what I want. Like I don't have to 
even try to hide from like my family because they're not around. They're 2,500 miles away or 3,500 miles, however far it is. <laughs> um, but basically, I was going on dates with guys. I was going to the gay bars almost every weekend, uh, making a lot of friends in the LGBT community here in Hawaii. Um, I basically was getting pulled into like the super like liberalism of just the idea of kind of like do whatever you want. And with the people who kind of were hanging out with us, um, I would say they're more like, of course, agnostic or they're more like spiritual, not religious. Or mm -hmm. um, some of them were kind of going into like the new age type of stuff. So naturally, I was kind of feeling drawn to the new age type of stuff and kind of like, I was never agnostic. Mm -hmm. Like during this time, I always like, would tell people I'm Catholic. Like <laughs> I believe in God, all these things, but I couldn't tell you Catholic teaching on pretty much anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just kind of Catholic by name at that mm -hmm. point. I never denied my Catholic faith. Like I was never like, Oh no, I used to be Catholic, but now I'm Buddhist or whatever it is. I was never like mm -hmm. that, but, um, I don't know, that was kind of where my spirituality and religion was at that point. Um, I was buying like, um, little Buddha statues and, and I don't know, looking into like astrology and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of where I was headed. Um, so then I guess after a while of going to the gay bars, in college, um, I did long for like a relationship for a companion because I'm like, I don't want to be sucked into like hookup culture. Or I don't want to be always going out till 4 a.m. every weekend. Like I want to be like at home in bed watching movies or sharing my life with someone. So I ended up um, meeting a good guy at one of my retail jobs I was working at. And um, we ended up dating for two and a half years. Um, it was actually a pretty serious relationship. Like we flew to Minnesota. He met my family. Um, we took other trips together. I met a lot of his family. Um, but during that relationship, things, there were just things that felt mm. off. Like we, like, for example, he wasn't out to, um, like his mom, for example, and that was kind of an issue for me because he lived with his family. So I would come mm. over to his place and I felt like, okay, how do I act now? Because I, we can't like give ourselves away or I don't want you to be given away. Like I didn't care if the mom knew um, that I was dating him. But so it was kind of like uncomfortable situation that like a heterosexual couple, mm -hmm. like that would never cross your mind, I feel like. So that was kind of one kind of mm. red flag that I didn't like. And then it's like when you're out in public, it's like, should we hold hands? Should we kiss? Should we not? It's like you feel like you know what's right, but you kind of want to do the opposite because you like, yeah, I want to hold his hand and yeah, I want to give you a kiss. But it's like inside I felt like something is off or something isn't right. And I didn't want other people to judge us. And so it's kind of like all mm. these little things that would keep happening um during that time so at the end of the two and a half years um i just decided it wasn't working out kind of based on some of those reasons um and then i was i guess just feeling like i wanted more too like we wanted to go further sexually um sometimes and i felt like i wanted to and and then of course all the other things with like the parent and I don't know, just like ju possible judgments of other people. And mm. then they didn't want to commit to like a long-term relationship either. Cause they were like still kind of in the closet with their family. And I'm like, you know, what? <laughs> like I can't do this anymore. Like I need to move on. So I ended the relationship and that's when I started like going full blown kind of into promiscuity, mm. kind of the opposite of what I was looking for before. Mm. Um, cause I think I longed for that like connection or attention or approval of the other guys and just wanting to feel like loved or, um, feeling like approved by them, which when I was able to get in their pants or, 
um, sleep with them, I felt like, okay, they do care about me or, oh, they do love me or, or they are interested in me as a person, all of that. So it's kind of like a skewed um, interpretation of what it means to be loved mm. or what it means to have someone show you affection. So from there, I guess 2017, I started feeling like a longing to go to church. Like I hadn't thought about church in like, I don't know how many years at that point, at least probably like seven or seven to 10 years, like church never crossed my mind. Like waking up Sunday, no nope, church never on my mind. I never owned a Bible. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't really have like any Christian friends or Catholic friends that were like devout in the faith. Um, but something in me, I was like, you know what? I want to go to church. I want to go to mm -hmm. mass. Um, so I would start asking my friends and that included like some of my gay friends. I would ask them, Oh, I know you grew up Catholic. Um, would you want to go to mass sometime with me? And they're looking at me like, what mass? Why would we want to go there? <laughs> and I'm like, well, why not? Let's just go like for a Sunday. Let's check it out. Like I want to go to mass. And they're like, no, no. And then of course I didn't want to go by myself. So then I never went. And then I was studying for my master's degree. So then that kind of kept me busy. Mm -hmm. Like not that I couldn't have gone to mass, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, just another thing to add to the list of excuses sure. of skipping out on mass. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then um, in 2018, my cousin, um, she gave me a call saying, I'm coming to Hawaii with a couple of my friends. Um, so, like, we're coming on this date. And I was excited because, uh, of course, she's my cousin. And I was looking forward to her coming to Hawaii and showing her around. Um, but then also, um, she is very involved with the Christian community on her college campus in California. She goes to one of the UC schools. Um, so when they came, I knew that they were going to want to go to church. So I was, of course, kind of nervous, but kind of excited at the same time. Like, oh, I have somebody to go to church with. Now I can finally go. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing is um, she's a Protestant. So um, the church that she, her, that she and her friends wanted to go to was actually a Baptist church. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go. Like I've only been to like Catholic mass mm -hmm. and maybe like a Lutheran wedding once or something. So <laughs> I really didn't know what to expect. Mm. And what really made me nervous was um, I always see on TV, like the Westboro Baptist people with their signs, mm. like the gays are going to hell and, and going to like soldier funerals and stuff mm. and protesting them because they were gay, all these things. So I was like super kind of nervous to go to the Baptist church because I was thinking, oh my gosh, like the Baptists hate the gays more than the Catholics do. Mm. Like that was my thought at the yeah. time. Like I was just a little nervous. So we went to the Baptist church, like they had like greeters and people there. They were very friendly. Of course, I walk in, I'm looking for the holy water. There's no holy water. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have like the chairs set up. They're kind of like, I don't know, nicer, like beach not like beach chairs, but like kind of conference chairs set up in rows. Mm -hmm. So that was weird mm -hmm. to me that there was no pews. <laughs> um, then they're like, did you bring your Bible? And I'm thinking, why do we have to bring our Bible to church? But then they had like a stack of Bibles you can borrow. So I was like, okay, well, I'll borrow one for now. <laughs> and I don't know, it was a different experience. Like it was very welcoming and friendly there. Um, they started off with like, five back-to-back -back songs like kind of like yeah. the praise and worship style songs that the protestants like to sing in their services mm -hmm. and um and this was like a little before christmas so one thing that kind of caught me off guard was the pastor at this baptist church he was saying all of us in this room um are like the things that we've done we're all deserve hell and i'm thinking oh my gosh christmas is only a couple days away and you're saying we're all going to hell like <laughs> what's going on here <laughs> and then um of course then he goes into like jesus died on the cross for our sins and but then it kind of goes into like a they went into like a once saved always saved kind of um sermon that they were talking about so mm -hmm. that kind of like got me thinking like am i really living my life 
um, like Jesus died for me or wow, Jesus really died for me too. Like those kind of thoughts started coming in my head. So they had invited me to their Bible study because, of course, they spot a new person and they're like, whoosh. <laughs> so they like came up to me after the service and were asking me questions like, oh, where are you from? And what church do you go to? And I'm like, oh, I don't go to a church, but I used to go to the Catholic church. So I ended up going to their Bible study, mm -hmm. which was like a Friday night singles Bible study. So I was like, oh, this will this will be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and I had gone and bought a Catholic Bible <laughs> at the um, at the Pauline bookstore that week because I didn't have a Bible. Uh -huh. So I bought it there and I brought it to there. And of course, right away, they saw it was the Catholic Bible. And then they kind of like called me out on it. Like, oh, is that your Bible? And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> Um, but they're like, okay, you can use it. So then anyways, at the end of the Bible study, like it went good. Um, and then they sat kind of like one-on-one -on -one, and they're like asking questions about, oh, like this Bible verse, it says like, if you believe in Jesus, like then you're saved and all these things. And even in my weak Catholic theology at the time, like I just felt something was a little off in their, what they were yeah. saying. Um, and then I felt like, the way they were approaching me and talking to me that they were going to try to convert me to become Baptist. But I'm like, no, but I'm Catholic. Like, I don't want to become Baptist. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to come learn the truth of the Bible and all these things. But then I'm thinking, well, what am I doing in the Baptist church then if I'm Catholic? Like, I need to find a Catholic church. So that's kind of what led me back into the Catholic church mm -hmm. is... Um, I looked online and went to a few different parishes in my area before I found one that felt like home when I walked in. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just, like, I guess my purpose in going back into the Catholic Church was I was looking for truth. Like, I wanted to know, mm -hmm. what does the Bible say about homosexuality? Like, what does the Catholic Church say about it? Um, how can I learn about this and discern if this is the right choice or am I allowed to follow be in church mm -hmm. if I'm gay all these things like that's what was going on in my head um so then I don't know I just would get like kind of emotional in the mass mm -hmm. um because of course at the beginning we're saying like the prayer about like our sins and all of that and they do like the absolution for like the venial sins and um, then, of course, being in the Mass, I just kind of was missing my family in a way, too, because I hadn't been in the Catholic Church since I was living with my family. So it was kind of sentimental mm -hmm. for me, too. So that brought emotions. Mm -hmm. And and I realized no one's judging me here in the church. Like, no one, mm -hmm. like, cares. Like, they're just there to fellowship and be together mm -hmm. and and I really started feeling welcome and engaged. And and then one day when I was leaving Mass, um, I had to go to a different evening Mass because I had something going on during my normal time. Um, but at the end of that Mass, they were praying the rosary. And of course, that reminded me of my grandma right away. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like I love the rosary. I want to pray with mm -hmm. them. So then I stayed back and prayed the rosary with them. And they invited me to their fellowship group afterwards that they have. And that that was my first fellowship group that I joined and like they were so nice and so welcoming and like I just felt so loved being in that group that that's kind of what really I'm like, okay, I think I'm I'm here for good. <laughs> like everyone's mm -hmm. so nice. And from there it's like I got networked into other groups. They're like, Oh, do you know this person? And no, I don't. Oh, you should um, link up with them and you can go to this group and then I would go to other churches for like confession or adoration and people would start coming up to me asking my name and I'd be like oh I'm Tyler and they're like oh welcome and oh we have a group after this and then it's like I'm invited to that group and and then I ended up joining the Catholic Beer Club also that's been really it's fun. It's called the Catholic <laughs> anyone... Beer Club? Is that what you said? Yeah, the Catholic Beer Club. <laughs> yeah, <cool. laughs> yeah. so they're actually around the country. Cool. So if anybody um, has a Catholic Beer Club in their area and they're still meeting with COVID, I'm not sure how different states are. But yeah, um, yeah definitely check it out because I met a lot of friends through Catholic Beer Club. Um, 
Yeah, that was the other one that really helped me connect with other people because it's kind of like a casual setting. Mm -hmm. Like you're out at like a bar or like a restaurant bar and talking about whatever, but then they mix in like um, some faith conversations because we're all Catholic. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that was really good to meet people. And then they invited me to their other young adult groups. And from there, it just blossomed into now I'm like in 10 different groups. So it's a little busy, yeah. but <laughs> definitely keeps me occupied. Mm -hmm. So so Tyler, at what, at what point when you came back to starting to participate in all these different Catholic ministries and groups, at, at what point, um, like you were saying, you felt very welcomed, right? Um, at, at what point did you start to feel comfortable in sharing that you experienced same-sex attraction? Like, was that at the very beginning or did it take some time? Uh, so it definitely wasn't at the very beginning. Um, like I wasn't like walking into these groups and being like, oh, like I experienced same-sex attraction. Like, what do I do or <laughs> anything like that? I just kind of, kind of played it by ear and let the Holy Spirit guide mm -hmm. me. Um, because for me, I wasn't, I was looking for truth. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, whatever is being spoken about tonight, just kind mm -hmm. of discern it and look into it. And um, I, I guess it took maybe at least nine months to mm -hmm. a year um, before I really opened up to people. And I opened up to like a few people that I know were, very kind of devout in the faith and have been in it for a while and understand the mm. teachings because not everybody in these groups I was going to, um, I feel like fully understands like the whole like chastity and all these things. They, they kind of have the mindset of, Oh no, like we don't have gay people in our group or this and that, like kind of that mindset. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I kind of discerned like what groups are, kind of the groups that I feel mm. comfortable in and what groups I feel op like open to talking about my story yeah. with. Cause I went from being kind of like ashamed of my testimony at first in the beginning felt like I needed to hide mm -hmm. it or um, I didn't want to talk about it with people. But then at a certain point, I'm like, I think that's the devil, like wanting mm. me not to share my <laughs> journey with yeah. people. Like, I feel like, I had such a hard time kind of finding other people with same sex attraction in the church that I'm like, you know what? I need to be more open and talk about my journey into Catholicism and chastity. So mm -hmm. I opened up to a few different people and then I did give my testimony at one of our groups during the quarantine on um, a Zoom mm -hmm. call. So that opened up a lot of people's eyes to my journey as mm -hmm. well. And it's a, this is an amazing story, Tyler. It's like, thank you so much for, for being so open. Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode or here to watch another clip I think you might enjoy. With that said, before you go, if you want to support the Catechism Guy, please consider clicking that subscribe button and then the bell. And that way YouTube will have to let you know every time we release a new video.